Well, hello, beloved students in CRST 381, uh, Old Testament 2. Um, I've marked all of your assignments. I enjoyed marking them. By the way, I love this course. It's the first time I've taught Old Testament that I really thought, I like this course because I finally understood how to teach it. And so I'm going to tell you what I finally understood after years, and I'm going to tell you why that's so helpful. I finally understood that the, the heart of the Old Testament is the history. And the rest of the Old Testament, like the prophets and the Psalms and Proverbs, and et cetera, the rest of it, which is a little bit less than half, is commentary, like commentary at a cricket game or a football game. It's commentary on the history. But the history is what's important. And the reason the history is important is because the history is developing what happened that brings us to, brings us from, I should say, the Garden of Eden, where Eve and Adam sinned against God and destroyed our lives. Thanks a lot, Adam and Eve. Just destroyed our lives and sent us to hell. And what a mess that is. And God made a promise that he was going to crush Satan's head. Praise the Lord for that. And the Old Testament is, the history is telling the story of how we get from Eden to the new heavens and the new earth. And obviously, the way we get there is through Jesus Christ. And so the Old Testament is about that one who's going to crush Satan's head. It's, it's the one who's going to crush Satan's head. We follow the history, how that one comes about. And, you know, we, we start with Adam and Eve and Cain kills Abel and then Seth comes and, and then the promise goes from generation to generation and generation, and the son is born, and that son's the one who carries the promise to the next generation, and then the son is born, and Abraham comes, and Abraham doesn't have any sons, and it looks like the promise is going to stop, but God says, no, promise is going to keep going, and you're through your descendant, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed, and then when Abraham's 100 years old, he has Isaac, and then God tells him to kill Isaac, and, but can't, can't really keep him dead. Because Isaac is the one through whom the promise comes. And everything is always about the promise. Why? Because the Old Testament is the story of how we get from Eve and the promise that God gave to Eve all the way to the new heavens and the new earth. We get there through Jesus. So that's why this thing about Abraham and Isaac is so important. That's why Isaac is the one who goes to Mount Moriah. And it's Isaac is the one who almost dies. Why? Because Isaac is the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus Christ. And we have to have Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the one who is the descendant of Abraham, descendant of Noah, descendant of Seth, descendant of Adam and Eve. He's the one who's going to crush Satan's head. How? Through the cross and then the resurrection. So, since that's what the Old Testament is, what do we do with the prophets? What do we do with the Psalms? Those are all commentaries. And this is awesome. They're commentaries on the history, on the story. The story is everything. And the, the other parts are commentaries on the story. And they're amazing commentaries, like amazing. Since we're dealing with prophets, we read the prophets, we learn all kinds of things about the story from the prophets. They explain the history. They explain Manasseh. They explain Josiah. They explain David. They explain Solomon. The, the, the prophets explain so much. And when we read the prophets, when you read the history, the history tells what happened. And sometimes the history says, ah, and this was sin. But most of the time, it doesn't even say that. It just tells us what happened. But then we come to the prophets. And the prophets say, well, what? this is what was really going on. And what we see in the history, this was what was going behind that. This was the people's hearts. This is what the people wanted. And so we read the history and we go, what did the prophets say about this event? And then we find it in the prophets. You know, that's why I have you go to the timeline, because the timeline tells you what was happening when that prophet wrote his prophecy. So you know what he's commenting on. So that's, that's the whole thing. So really, it's kind of exciting because it changes the way we read the Psalms and the Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. 
That's poetry. So we haven't talked about that too much in this course, but also what the prophecy, what Isaiah is saying and what Hosea is saying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's amazing. So I just wanted you to get this, that the, the whole thing about the prophets is the prophets are always commenting on the story. Now you're going to be looking at the story of Manasseh. And that's one of my very favorite stories. And I hope that as you watch that, you'll realize God is amazing. He forgave Manasseh. Uh, that's, you, you'll, you'll see why that's so amazing. He forgave Manasseh and he brought him back. And when we get to the new heavens and the new earth, we're going to meet Manasseh. We're going to meet him because he is with Jesus now. Ah. And that shows us, shows us why the Bible is different from any other book in the world. Because the Bible is a book of grace. Because if you took Manasseh and you say, oh, let's take all of his good works and all of his bad works. Well, his bad works are like, shh. I mean, his bad works totally outweigh the good works. God's a God of grace. God's a God of grace. Because of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came to the cross and died for our sins. And God's the one who sent him to the cross. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, so I hope you have a great Sunday and get some rest. And I wish I could see you. I pray. I just wish I could see you. Okay, God bless. Grace and peace.